everyone. My name is Carrie, and I'm interviewing Gromble on September 4th, 2020 for the Gottwick Oral History Project. This interview is being conducted and recorded in a private Discord chat. The recording will be made available for anyone interested on the Black Dragons Discord in the Oral Histories channel. Thank you for joining me today, Gromble. Thanks for having me. So, first question. How do you pronounce your in-game name, and why did you choose this name for yourself? Um, yeah, I would pronounce the name Grumbled. Grumbled, um, okay. Yes, but I don't care if somebody butchers my name. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I did? <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter at all to me. Just okay. do whatever you want with the name, basically. Um, yeah, it's, it's a game, it's a name that goes back a while which a friend of mine uh, basically gave to me and it just sticked with me how did it come about <sighs> i don't really remember it to be honest okay it's just yeah it's just your gamer name yes basically okay so when did you first start playing uh got wick I started playing, I think, when it officially released, like around one or two weeks after that. So that should have been around March, April 2019, I think. Okay. Something like that. And what made you first interested in playing the game? Mm, I first saw an ad of the game at a convention I was in, at, here in Germany. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and like there was a huge cardboard, like cardboard king's landing being portrayed with an iron throne where you could go and sit on it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah and you basically you didn't show anything about the game. It was just the throne and the um, cardboard stuff. Right. And uh, a place where you could enter your email to get updates on the game. So that's where I entered my email, and then I got a mail when the game released, and that's how I started it. Okay. And you were interested in Game of Thrones before this? Yes, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, read, I read the books. I watched the show. Uh, okay. Yeah. And do any of your family members or friends play with you? Um, when I started the game, I started with, like I think, four or five friends of mine from the actual real life. Okay. Um, but they all dropped out around a month into the game. Well, that's a shame. And left me alone. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Any particular reason why? Um, I think it was for various reasons. Some of them didn't have the time because they were starting studying at that time. Ah. Studying going to university, and other ones uh, just didn't have the interest in this kind of game. I gotcha. Yeah. So tell me about your first kingdom. What was it like there for you? It was interesting and overwhelming, I'd say, because I had no idea about the game. I was just logging in, doing random clicks, <laughs> and hoping it was something good that I was doing. What kingdom Turned were you out, on? Uh, I was in, K in K1. Oh, you, were, you started out really at the beginning K1. Okay. Yes, that was really the first kingdom where I started at. Did you play um, pre-release? Were you part of the pre-release crowd? I th I'm not sure, because I remember something being like some kind of beta, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Could be. All right, so you started out on K1, we'll just go with that. Um, yeah. So what alliance did you start with? I started with HTN, I think it was called. Okay. It was a very small alliance. Um, yeah, it was named House Targaryen with Queen Daenerys as, as the ruler of the Alliance. Okay. And, yeah. Tell me about it. I don't remember, I, I don't remember much about the time because it was so long ago. Okay. And so much has happened till then in this game. Mm. But I know that um, we were a pretty small Alliance on K1. Okay. And... Back then, nobody really had an idea about the game, and 
I didn't know what bubbles are, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I logged in every time to see my army getting sorted again. I was wondering what I'm doing wrong, and I had no idea what, what I could do to protect them back then. How did you find but out? It was an interesting time. Mm, it was after I, I jumped kingdoms to K5 and joined my current alliance that I'm still with today that I learned how to properly play the game, basically. Okay. And what made you jump kingdoms? Um, I think we as HDN, we were unsatisfied with K1 because we had uh, no chance, basically. We were getting farmed by the other alliances in there all the time and stuff like that. Right. So the alliance leadership decided to jump kingdoms. Okay. And so tell us, what alliance are you in now? Uh, I'm now in HOH, okay. the House of Heroes. And that was the one that you joined on K5. Um, what was that like, switching into a different alliance like that? Was it a merger, or what, what um, was the situation with that? I think it was supposed to be some kind of um, becoming sister alliance situation. Okay. But that didn't work out between the leaderships, and I was basically the only one that moved over. Oh! Was that surprising and, um, for you? Yes, a bit. And I was surprised that they took me in, because back then I was like a small 10 million castle, or <laughs> 50 million castle. Baby Grom. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I was pretty grateful for, for to them for letting me in. Okay. And it was like a completely different world. Because like, like, it was a full active alliance full of people who wanted to do something. When back in the old alliance, it was just barely active. You couldn't couldn't fill rallies against rebel camps and stuff like that. There was mm. a huge change in perspective for me as well. And kind of an eye opener for the entire game because it opened so many new possibilities and ways for me to play the game. Okay. So you're now in this alliance and then now you've been in this alliance for over a year right yes okay what around a year right now actually i think okay that's pretty great yeah it is so what about the alliance has kept you staying in there um well for one when uh, back when i joined they were all very kind to me and like i mm, got more and more invested into the alliance like I made a bunch of friends and we played along together and everything worked out fine and I never really saw a reason for me to to leave the alliance right um, especially because of all the friendships that have been formed over like over the year now and over all the hardships and and stuff that we went through as an alliance so yeah what kind of hardships well, there have been a few. Back on back on K5, um, relatively shortly after I uh, joined HOH, um, I think the server was, was invaded by Run. Okay. And and Sin, and the alliances on the server kind of formed a coalition to to fight back against them. How did that work? And well, uh, it depends on who you ask, really. I think. Um, <laughs> okay. In my opinion, it was pretty even most of the times, but I didn't have the full perspective. Back then, I was just a filthy little uh, rally filler, so I had no really a real idea what is what's going on behind the scenes and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but in the end, the server died because the alliance started moving away. Okay. So it was then we moved to K thirty four. Shortly, like one or two months, I think, after we arrived on K34, it got invaded by Moyun. Um, so we didn't, we never really catch the break. Um, then Moyun stayed for around three months. Then there were problems with the other alliances in the kingdom, which I'm not really sure I want to go into detail with right now. Okay. Um, then we jumped to K15 recently, and then two weeks after we jumped to K15, ARP invaded the kingdom. So, oh gosh! Yeah, been <laughs> we've been kind of plagued by uh, invaders, kind of always following us whenever we jump kingdoms. 
it's been like you're a, cursed. Been cursed. Yeah, yeah, you're cursed, man. Oh my god. <laughs> um, we just never have to jump kingdoms again, and then we'll never get invaded again. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think the kingdom that you're never going to jump to will appreciate that. Um, okay, so tell me about the personalities of your fellow alliance members. You you're, know them very well at this point, I imagine. It's a pretty close group. How would you describe oh, yeah. yourselves? Um, yeah, definitely. We're a pretty close group. We spent a lot of time together in the last year in and out of the game. And we also play different games outside right. of the of Godwick together. And, well, it's a, like how you could imagine, it's a big alliance. We, have, uh, we were always full, basically, and a lot of different personalities, different people and different play styles of the game. And it's like, yeah, we have free-to-play players. We have people who spend a bit. We have people who spend a bit more. And it's just, like, pretty balanced, I'd say, and a good and safe uh, environment, put it that way. Okay. Consisting of very different personalities. Mm. I guess my next question then would be, how do you feel... Well, first of all, what is your position in the Alliance at this point? Um, I'm part of the leadership of the Alliance by now. Okay, are you like the Diplo or anything like that, or just a Alliance leadership member? Um, we kind of... We don't really have this... Like, we, we, of course, have a little separation into different topics, which of the Alliance leadership members. Yes. But it's like everybody decides over everything. So it's not like the Diplo decides, only Diplo staff and... The chief knight only decides chief knight stuff and stuff like that. So everybody's involved into everything, basically. I got you. But I would say that I shifted more towards the diplo side of it. Okay. Um, how do you handle that kind of position? So you say you lean more towards the diplo side, but you handle a lot of different things as a group. Yeah. So what do you I find mean, the most challenging? What is it that you as part of leadership need to really be mindful of? Um, for once, it's kind of the communication bet- um, with other alliances. That's been also quite challenging in the past with different alliances that we've, we've met over the year. Mm. Um, but also with like decisions, like if we get new apl- applicants and we need to kind of remove members it's always a hard decision to remove people who have been inactive for a while but have been with us for a year before that right so it's like a it's a it's a tough thing to decide to to finally kick a person that you still hope that would come back to the game properly you know yes. um but yeah it's like all this this different this um range of decisions that you need to make uh, as a leadership that's that are quite challenging each at its own. What do you find the most rewarding in being in leadership? Um, seeing that the Alliance functions well and that all the members are feeling uh, safe and having fun playing the game with us as well. So if, if there's no drama happening and um, everybody has fun doing events and enjoys the time playing the game, then that's the best reward basically I could get for being part of a leadership. What what do you have as a personal goal at this point? That's a really tough question. Because it is. Um, because you've accomplished got... quite a bit in the game. I mean yeah that's true. Um I mean the game at this point got to a point got to a point where uh, you either spend a lot or you're always like getting punched down when it comes to it by the people who spend a lot. Mm. So, um, I mean, I will always try to play around that, play with play Zero Castle or stuff like that. Um, so, like, I'm not really sure what I would put as my, as having a goal of mine at the moment. Um, I just want to to keep everyone in, in our alliance happy and keep playing with the friends that I've made over the last year. That would I think that would basically be 
my main goal at this point. Okay. Would, keep, would be to keep the people together. So, you had an initial impression of the game, right? How has yes. that impression changed over time? Mm, quite a lot. Like, quite huge, actually. It's like, when I first saw the game, um, like on this convention, I had no idea about the game. Right? I didn't see any gameplay, I didn't see anything. I just thought it's Game of Thrones related and back in a time where I basically inhaled everything that had to do with Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, so I started playing the game, started playing with the friends. We had a lot of fun in the early days, we just got raided, go, went out and raided people and were attacked with bows and stuff like that, right? Because everybody did whatever they thought was the correct thing and nothing was wrong, nothing was right because everybody was still testing out stuff. So you had no idea what, what's actually the proper way to do it. Um, the game shifted away from that, obviously, because now people know how to play the game and it, people know how to react to certain things happening. Right. So, you, you, you always, when within every new update, you need to find a new way to play around the stuff of the big guys. Like, with the new dragon being released, you need to now need to figure out how to evade the skills of it and how to properly counter them. And before that, you had to learn how to evade attacks from the direct, from the from the whales. That the solution to that was playing a zero castle. You now you have, like, the game brings new mechanics in from time to time that you need to adjust to it. And so that basically uh, like adds to the to the changes of the overall impression of the game that I had from the beginning. It's like an always evolving game at this moment, I think. Do you think it's due to the additions that they make or the player base? Um, I think it's both. It's like, um, obviously, um, if nothing changes, if nothing gets added, the game will remain the same, even if new different players come in. Maybe they bring a bit of uh, different methods into it, but the overall aspects won't really change that much. Okay. But if those both combine like new contents, new mechanics being added, and new players who do stuff differently, both meet up. Mm, I think it's like a mixture of both that attributes to this. What do you think is your favorite part of the game? <sighs> I think it's basically um, playing with playing events with the alliance. It's like being at KVK Castle Siege where you actually can lose stuff, like depends of with the new KVK, you maybe not lose stuff, but um, <laughs> it's like where, where actually stakes are involved. Okay. And, but also like um, events like Alliance Conquest, where you obviously want to achieve, like perform well with the Alliance and get to a high ranking. Um, but also like events like Army of the Dead, which I know that um, many find dull and boring, but for me, it's always like, uh, we get together as an alliance and we talk about random stuff for one and a half hours, basically. Mm. And most often then after AOTD for, for for the rest of the evening and stuff like that. So it's a... While the event itself is not that interesting, it's always a good uh, opportunity to bring everybody into voice chat and uh, talk about random stuff with them. So it's basically the, the event side of the game that I would say is the most interesting to me at this point. Okay. So if that's your most interesting, what's your least favorite? Uh, gathering. <laughs> uh, you don't want to put on I, the little farmer outfit and head out there and get some grain? I absolutely detest it. It's, oh. it's just so incredibly boring and dull and, ah, no. <laughs> so then, do you have hyper farms? Uh, yes. Is it allowed to say it? I just say it. Yes, I, I do have you just did so yes you're allowed to yeah. say it <laughs> so what do you think of hyper farm how how has that changed the game dynamic for you um i mean it's changing quite a lot because i now don't need to gather anymore mm -hmm. and i can be mostly self-sufficient it's like i can finance everything that i need to do which is with my 
like just financing myself without needing the help of uh, the Alliance Bank necessarily. Um, so it's it's kind of a good thing that I don't need to put pressure on the on the bank by uh, by this. So I can just feed everything to myself and still have stuff over to send to the bank if needed and stuff like that. So it's a it helps quite a lot. Just not only me but also the entire Alliance. I but um, yeah, the most important thing is I don't have to gather. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's talk a little bit about your proudest moment in the game. <sighs> what moment it. stands out to you? Hmm. See, like, That's everybody really, takes really a moment question. and goes, the hmm, and thinks. But honestly, everybody has that aha moment that immediately popped in their head before they start second-guessing it. I want to know what that aha moment was. Hmm. I think it was basically me joining the leadership of the alliance. Okay. It's like, um, like before that, I was already uh, tried to help the alliance, however and whenever I could, and put effort into it. And then, like when I got the acknowledgement, basically of my my work and my help that's been that I've been trying to give, mm. it was probably my proudest moment. And then being able to help out the Alliance from a different uh, perspective, different aspect, was, I was, yeah, I need to say, I, I was quite proud of that. Need to admit it. <laughs> so, if that's your proudest moment, then what's your least proud, proudest? Uh, um... I don't really know. Like, there's nothing that pops into mind. And, like, there are a few things that I would would have done differently, probably, if I would have the knowledge I have today. Okay. But there's nothing that I would say um, was would, would that I would describe as my unproudest moment, to be honest. Okay. Because I I don't like if I do mistakes, I see them as an <clears throat> sorry, I see them as an some kind of an investment in the future so like if i do mistakes i know what i did wrong and i work on it so it doesn't happen again so like, so you take it as a learning situation yes basically i understand yeah. that yeah no a lot of people do that i mean this is not meant to like shame or anything but sometimes there's those moments that we kind of wish we had taken back you can't you yeah. grow from it but yeah yeah, exactly. Like, I, I have a few of those, but um, nothing that would pop into my mind being as the most... Okay. Most, the biggest moment that I regret, really. Understood. All right. Um, so, what do you think is the key to a successful alliance? Um, I think it's a good communication between the leadership and the rest of the alliance. And... Um, basically the leadership working on making the members feel safe and, and wanted, each and every one of them, while also <clears throat> proving the, excuse me, I need to... <clears throat> Take a drink of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so where was I? Um, it's basically the everybody feels wanted, no matter how small or big they are. Okay. That everybody can also get involved into the alliance if if wanted and needed, in whatever way they they want to. And basically, that there is a safe and uh, secure environment for all kind of players, no matter where they come from or what they believe in, basically. Do you ever have members that feel like they need that security? Like they came from a bad situation and now they're just glad to be home? Mm, I think there are a few that would fit into that scenario. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I obviously can't say more about that. No, 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 no outing anybody. Um, no, no, of course not. Um, it's just more of it. So what I'm trying to get at more is um, you've been with them for a year and you've seen the highs and the lows and experienced it and you have all these different people and you've gotten to know them really well and it's trying to create that picture of a very successful alliance that has been pretty much together since the beginning. Yeah. And you are in the position to be able to comment on both your role in it and its own evolution. So just trying to shape that out a little. Is there anything that you can think of that I did not ask you about that would help that perspective? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay. Like nothing that pops straight into my mind. If it does, while we keep talking, you let me know and you just come in with it. Yeah, of course. Okay. So let's get to change gears a little bit. You became a chronicler. Yes. When did that happen? I did. Um, I think it did happen in the first week that they introduced the system. Okay. What made you um, want to be a chronicler? At that point, when they introduced the system, I had already uploaded my first video on YouTube, like before that uh, system even got introduced. And I already played with the thought of um, doing something like that more regularly. And then the chronicler thing uh, was introduced. I was like, this is like a, like the, uh, the future, and like wing, uh, throwing stones at me, saying, telling me that I should do this right now. <laughs> like basically came at the perfect moment okay. in, in that context for me. So I decided to give it a shot and it worked out pretty well so far. I'm quite happy with uh, what I've done, with what I've produced as content in the last few months that I've been doing it. And doing it so you focus on doing podcasts <laughs> well uh, in the last few uh weeks yes okay yeah because that's my <laughs> only experience is your podcast so i'm curious <laughs> about how that came about for you um it, it with just like the podcast yeah um, what made you come up with also... the idea and why are you still doing them what is it about it that appeals to you um, it, it basically started with the infamous um, podcast about the uh, Blue Dragon. Oh, okay. Um, just like me and a bunch of chronic at the Chroniclers were discussing it in, in on the Chronicler Discord. And then we just said, like, let's talk about it in, in chat, like in voice chat. And then I think Bubble had the idea to just record it as some kind of podcast where we just express our opinions on it and our views on it and yeah then afterwards we just try to search different topics for new editions of the podcast now we have the ultimate conquest where we basically discuss every uh round of of pairings after they've played um and yeah it's like it's a it's a fun thing to do for me as a as a chronicler, like I have fun recording it with the other people, you including. Um, <laughs> you mean you and... ambush me each time, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! Um, I have no comment. But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's also a, I think it's for me it's an interesting way to give to other people an idea about what I think and what the other chroniclers think about aspects of the game. Um, now in particular with Alliance Conquest or like with the Ultimate Conquest, we always have people from different alliances in the Conquest and the podcast. Right. That all participate in the Ultimate Conquest and give their views on, on their alliance and how they view their opponent alliances and stuff like that. So it's always a quite, quite an interesting viewpoint that I think is um, can be an interesting addition to to the current um, chronicler surroundings. No, it's definitely 
garnered interest at least for the people gambling on UC. Um, how has that impacted you, by the way? Have you gotten any hate mail yet? Um, no, I didn't. Okay, I've heard some I'm... angry people so far on the betting predictions. So... I mean, yeah, but like everything that I predicted and that I predicted wrong, I predicted wrong for myself as well. So it's not like I've been baiting people into doing, into <laughs> betting wrong stuff or anything. Like, no, it, it no, the no. Thing as I did. They suffer as much as I do. So, you suffer together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I didn't think you were baiting, but I wonder. No, so no. the chroniclers I... are in a unique situation to reach a large audience. But at the yes. same time, when we share something, there's a certain onus upon us to share as accurately as possible. And yes. so the question is, when that goes awry, how do you personally cope with it? Mm, like I have no problem with dealing with, with hate mail or something if it comes up. One, okay. one day and I can't expect it to happen at one point but um, I've been lucky so far and I don't have to deal with it that's good um, oh definitely definitely but like even if it comes up like the most important thing is to not let it, let it get to you and I've been managing that uh, pretty well so far good I guess good okay yeah. What is your favorite part of being a chronicler when it comes to working with your other chroniclers? Um, I think it's, it's like for me personally, it helped me understand a lot of alliances a lot better. It's like the, the exchange of, of viewpoints you have with other players who've been around for long or not so long in the game. Right. I get it. Do you think it's making you closer or it's, even it's... more um how would i put it even though you might be adversaries still you're not enemies do you think that oh yeah most certainly yeah you know, like th that's the thing I've, I've never really um taken any player as an as an enemy or anything like even if we if the alliances were in a war or something and as soon as the war was over for me it was over as well or like if we had <clears throat> Conflict with alliances and then we jump kingdoms. Like that's the moment when, for me, all the an anonymous and and all the the hatred stopped towards the other lines, basically. Mm. So I don't have a problem with talking to people from alliances that have, may have been opposed uh, to us in the past. Good. Uh, if they're chroniclers or if they're novel players. So you're able to transition pretty well through interactions. Yes. That's I'd really say good. So. Do you think that has to do with your gaming experience or just your personal comfort level? <clears throat> I mean, I think it is a mixture of both. Um, like regarding, especially regarding regarding the the hatred that I possibly get from other alliances mm. that I've got from other alliances like I'm I'm used to it from playing different games where people are a lot more toxic uh, than they are in this game even so like that they those games help me uh, shape basically shape me in a way that I don't get affected by people trying to insult me or anything right so yeah okay so Again, shifting gears. Who do you admire in the game? Another tough question. <laughs> you're getting a bunch of new questions today that I have not asked, but you're gonna get yeah. this goodie, this this oldie and goodie, or however they phrase it. Everybody goes through this one. It's 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 a hard question. Like there are a lot of people who I think of an uh, think of a great deal in this game okay that i've met uh, throughout the entire year some of them have already quit the game some of them have just recently joined my path in this game basically 
So okay. it's it's really hard to to um, say tell a person that I admire most without <laughs> offending the other okay. people. Okay, I'm going to. I did not say admire most. I just said admire. Okay. So you are off the hook. Whoever is not named here, it's not because <sighs> he doesn't admire you the most. In fact, if he names you, it means he doesn't. <laughs> so there you go. You're off the hook. Wow, Carrie. Just, just... <laughs> Push me down the hole even further. Um, I take that last part back. Okay, so who do you <laughs> admire? <laughs> okay, so um, basically, I'd say um, most of the of my fellow alliance, like not most, like all of my fellow uh, leadership uh, members of my of our alliance. Okay. That I've all played with for a year now and stuff like that. Um, also a few people outside of my alliance, I'd say. Um, the most recent, I'd say, is would be Bubble. I just uh, I just love that guy, basically, really. You guys just, have a uh, bromance. Guy. The bromance is real. <laughs> it's just, he's just a super fun guy to be around. Hey, hey, hey. And he has a... <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, he has an interesting perspective on the game most of the times. And okay. also sees it from a different perspective as I do as he's a big bit bigger than I am okay um but yeah like um he was he's basically one of the chroniclers I've uh, spent the most time with in the last few months since I became a chronicler doing the podcast and stuff like that also communicating with him um but yeah there are a bunch of of, of other people as well um, one of them would be Wolfen in GCM, who back when we were in K34, um, we were allied to GCM, or like we're still allied to them, but we are on different kingdoms now, so it, yeah, yeah, it's I know an alliance mean. on paper basically. Um, but I still still keep in contact with them on a, on a daily basis because I, I like a lot of people there as well a lot, um, but. Yeah, she in particular has been very supportive of, of me in the last few months since I've been a chronic now. And it's been a good friend so far, so even though we don't really know us for, for that long. Um, so, yeah. And everybody that I didn't name, please don't feel offended now. <laughs> <laughs> totally offended. So offended. Um, <laughs> so... Oh, God. What? <laughs> <laughs> maybe now i will get my first hate mails <laughs> there you go i had to set it up for you remember guys it might not be trending by the time this goes out but hashtag blame grom okay <laughs> <laughs> um I, i'm not even sure how that started but i was I, think you've been I was just messing most, around uh, it, it was funny to me i was just messing around and Everybody Kevin, started ultimate, joining in. <laughs> it's like Ultimate Q mentioned it the other day on the Chronicle Discord that people on his Discord are using it. It's like, yes. What the fuck? And then Race what, put what, it what in his happening? in his post, and I'm like, oh, we got to make this a thing. We, we have to make this <laughs> yeah. more global. <laughs> it's just, it's just, uh, yeah. I mean, if you if you need to blame somebody, just blame me. I can happily deal with it. <laughs> yeah, you have proven you you have the tough skin for it. So when in doubt, blame Brom. Oh, Rom. definitely. Um, yes. <laughs> so oh, hate mail to me, please. <laughs> <laughs> he'll make like a wall of fame or shame. I'm not sure which way he'll look at it, but he'll he'll have a wall. I, I'll print it. I'll print it out and put it in my flat someplace. For sure. <laughs> um. Okay, are there any special moments that you remember that stand out to you? I know you mentioned, you know, when you finally got into leadership as a proudest moment, mm -hmm. but are there any just special moments that you really just get happy about that you want to share or maybe you got really angry about? Like something that just stood out to you so mm -hmm. much that it's like, this is a moment I will remember always. Um, it was that one moment, like I think two kvks ago when we we jumped to k15 and like a week later kvk was happening okay and we were matched against k37 i believe okay and during the second half of 
of KVK, um, we found a whale that was unbubbled and had a slower than King's Landing. Ooh. And we figured out that he was AFK. And together with two, like together with, I think, two other alliances of K15, we managed to zero him down completely. Wow. Which was, it was a long process. Like it took a thing around half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, with three rallies running constantly. But it was a it was a really fun fun thing to do. Like we all sit in voice and it's like, is he coming back now? Will the next rally hurt because he got his load back home and stuff like that? I was also always like sitting a bit on edge and stuff like that. It was like one moment that I will probably never forget. Um, because of it being successful or the teamwork, what yes. part of it? I mean, yeah, like a mix of both. Okay. We, we it was successful in the end. We zeroed him down completely. And we worked together with different alliances that we just got to do like two weeks before that. And it was like a, a great show of, of the kingdom, basically, at mm. that point. Mm -hmm. But also to like, you always as a, as a small player that, like in comparison to Wales, you're always small, right? And that one point where you can kill one of them, basically, is just like a... A good, like a happy moment for every smaller player to, <laughs> to be part of it. You have done yeah. it a, a service for all type situations. <laughs> I mean, by now he's already even above the power he had back then. So oh, I don't okay. know if if it really like in the end it didn't really matter that much, I guess. But it was just for us a fun experience. I gotcha. Um, so I guess two more things. Right. One, what do you hope to see in the future in the game? Mm. I mean, I think it's a lost cause at this point, but I would I would love to see a bit of more of a balance between different kind of players, but I'm not really expecting it to happen okay um but i just hope that the imbalance doesn't go even bigger than it is already and people can still uh, enjoy the game without being uh, super whales or being in alliances with super whales right but yeah we'll okay see. and if there was one thing about you, what would it be that you'd want people to remember most? Oh, come on, Carrie. That is a standard. You've heard enough of my interviews to know that one comes up. Yeah, but like, what do I, what do I want people to remember? You can do it. <laughs> I like, guess far yeah. harder ones. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it's it's probably that I'm always trying to be uh, very respectful and um, and a kind person towards other people, um, and I hope that people see me that way as well. And if they have some issues with me, that they know that they can come directly to me and don't need to go to a different over different routes to to get to me. Okay. It's like. Uh, I've seen that happen in the past that people are trying to get to me by uh, getting to others and like making them feel bad about something. And I just really, really dislike something like that. I'll just, uh, if people have a problem with me, just get bring it straight to me and not involve others with it. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I always try to be respectful. I'm, I'm a very open-minded person. Um, so... I hope that people remember that side of me and not that that I zeroed them or anything, <laughs> something like that. Hopefully they'll get past that part and remember <laughs> that you're nice. Hopefully. 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 <laughs> not likely. No. I could always um... have... <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, wow. no, no, no. They probably will if they listened you? to this because then they would know you are a nice person. No, I'm sad. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll just go play bubble tea singing to you, and then you'll feel better. <laughs> oh, that most certainly helps. That's okay, true. I promise. I will play it after this. 
Um, <laughs> okay, so is there anything else that you would like me to include in this recording before we wrap it up? Um, no, I'm, I don't think there is. Okay. Except that if in doubt, blame Grom. When in doubt, blame Grom. Hashtag. Don't forget the hashtag. We will make this trend. <laughs> hashtag blame Grom. All hashtag right. blame Grom. <laughs> I blame Carrie for blaming me. For I blame, blame Grom me. for blaming Carrie for blaming Grom. God, this is... We're going to totally in inception this. <laughs> 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 and on that note, thanks for joining me today, Grom. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it, Gary. You're very welcome. Have a great day. <laughs> thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>